Hey! See the grasshopper over there? It's another very hot day here in Central Australia. I'm out here on a bit of a rock hill and I found another food. It's this big one right behind you. It's called the desert fig, Ficus platypoda, and it's a very important food out here. And it's one of the best tasting ones you'll find. I've collected a few here. It's a very small fig. One of the good things about them is that there's always a fig fruiting. They're not very common, so maybe one in every five or so hills or mountains you'll find one. It is a rock fig. It, it pretty much only grows sort of around where water is um, in rocks, in like rock hills. The red fruit tastes almost exactly like a commercial fig, so very good. The yellow ones are barely sweet, so if you can imagine what a savoury fig tastes like, it's not great, it's kind of powdery. Generally though, all the birds, all the animals will eat the red ones before you can get to them. They're a very good shade tree. Just before I started filming, there was a kangaroo right in there. And um, when he saw me, he got scared and jumped away. <laughs> but yeah, figs have a mutualistic relationship with wasps. So each fig tree, there'll just be a single kind of wasp that pollinates them. And that's one of the reasons why, why there's always a, free, uh, always a fig somewhere fruiting. Or even on one tree, it, the whole tree may not be fruiting except for one branch which is fruiting. And this is so that the wasp, which has a very, very short lifespan, doesn't go locally extinct. There always has to be a fig fruiting somewhere for them to um, pollinate. The wasp for this kind of fig is called, doesn't have a common name, it's called Pleistodontes caniatus. It's a tiny brown wasp, just like a millimetre or two big. And they burrow into the figs and they pollinate them. It's the same for figs worldwide. Every fig will have a different wasp. It's definitely one of my favourite foods out here. I'll show you what the plant looks like. This is it right here. You'll always be in competition with ants, as you can see there are quite a few on there. The leaves are thick and leathery, which makes great shade. Out here it's so hard to find shade. All the, all the leaves are spiny, thin. This is the biggest kind of leaf that you'll find around here. And it has a kind of, like almost all figs, a white rubbery sap that can be irritating to some people. That's it there, I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and... Try and get a better example. And that sap is also present in the unripe fruit, the green fruit. You don't want to eat that. It's kind of, it's bitter um, and astringent. But yeah, this plant with its dark green leaves is fairly easy to spot um, in the distance. You can t tell it 
apart from the other plants because it's a darker shade of green and the shape of the tree is more solid because it doesn't let as much sunlight through to the rock underneath so it looks like a looks like a hard to describe it just looks like a darker blob compared with other plants at least in central australia they grow to about nine meters in height but you'll rarely find them above like five pretty tree in any case. I think that's about it. See you in the next video.